Uh, these headliner replacement instructions really only apply for sure to this version of the truck, the SLT, with the four door with no center pillar. And I'll show you why. This is the only one that has these. Today's tools were a ratchet with a T50 torque bit, uh, Phillips, a T25 driver, a, a body pin tool you can get by with just a flathead. If you're careful, you just don't want to pop the pins. And then a flathead screwdriver because there are a couple of places where you do need to pry things loose. If you've never seen a headliner removed from a vehicle, it's a lot of fiberglass with a little bit of foam. That's how come it makes the crunchy sound. This foam deteriorates over time as well, and then that's what makes your headliner fabric actually fall down. This is realistically just cosmetic stuff because you know this is torn up, wearing out, starting to fall down. I've got this kind of stuff all along the front. But I had the opportunity to pick up a new headliner in good shape for about 15 bucks. And here we are. This console, if it has one, actually you can just grab here, pull down and pry gently. And these clips right there, one on each side will come out. And then a pair of Phillips head screws in the front. When you pull that console down, be careful because there is the wiring harness that comes down. This looks like it has a clip, but you got to press on on both sides. So I'm going to need both hands for that. As a note, there's not actually a clip holding it in place. Just gently but firmly grip each end, pull it apart. You can see I actually do not have a passenger side sun visor. But I fixed that problem when I found a pair that were in better shape than mine. They're outside the hinge. We'll have three total Phillips heads. While the other part will have one. To get the headliner out, you're going to need to drop at least one of the front covers and get that loose. You may have one of these on each side. I broke those on the one I was pulling it out of. I'm going to try to keep them in mine. And then you got a pair of T25 torque bit screws in here. That's attached to the hood, uh, to the cab. Does not need to come off. This is not only attached, it's held in place by tension on this. You'll have to pop it loose to get it through there, but it does not have to come all the way out. And then you can see one, two, three, four clips holding it in. Over there you have another uh, for the door closure. And that's gonna be the last thing that you have to remove. Um, now, if you decide to drop that panel, you will need to remove that handle or else it's not going to want to come loose. Final note is you may be able to just pull this cover forward enough to get that out, uh, get the headliner out. But if you have to, you can pop this cover. There's going to be a Torx head bit behind it at the top of the seat belt anchor. Um, you can just pop, screw that out, take it off, move this forward, and this will drop. And I'll show you in the video, it's a little bit of a hassle to get it out just because it is the size of the cab of the truck, but otherwise not too difficult. Okay, so you see that kind of clothes hanger hook over there? Almost, there's no screw, no anything. Looks like you're gonna have to break it to get it off. In fact, that splits, comes down and retracts that pin in the middle so that it will slide right out and when you go put it back together slide it up in there and it's in place 
cool, right? Now these front pillars are held in place with a pair of clips. You can see the clip here where it broke off of that and then that one where it clips in. If you're gentle when you pull them out, that won't happen. Mine was already broken. Probably when they installed this previous sound system, which caused a lot of electrical problems when I first got the truck. Sorry about the wind noise today. Got these T25s in here now. To get this piece out, you can push it back, press this up, and then slide this forward off of it. I was a little mistaken, the cover on the seat belt actually just slides up and off and reveals a T50 torque bolt. Uh, easy enough to take off, you don't even need an impact gun. I'm gonna get to it. This handle may be the hardest part because it helps if you can get something up in there to pry those loose. Because once you do, it's just going to slide along the handle to reveal that screw up there you have to take out. And again, just something that's hard to do with one hand. I think it'll be easier to show you now that I've got this loose. There's a pair of little indentions here. A pair of tabs there. So typically, if you can pry it down enough on the end to pull it and it'll pop loose. And then it'll get slide over like that and you can reach the Phillips head on both sides. As you can see, the whole assembly will actually come out. Those plastic pieces will mark the hold, hold it in place, but it's only held in its location by the screw there and then the depth of the headliner. So this will swing down like that, which will pass from the driver's side which will allow that part to come loose, quit holding it in place. And the whole assembly will come loose so you can slide it through, up and through when you go to drop that. And as entertaining as it would be for me to show you <laughs> the issue I'm gonna have removing these, it's just a matter of having both hands. I'll let you have a good laugh when I go on to pull out the old headliner, okay? Trying to be careful because I don't want to have to replace these. I'm not going to be able to match that gray unless I go back to a junkyard. Two down, two to go. I'm going to recommend that doing the middle one last because when this drops, it'll be better if it drops in the middle and doesn't put weight on an end. You probably saw that in the distant shot, but if that mirror is going to be in your way, get in position, put the torque on it to move it where it belongs, not on the end of a lever so it pops that adhesive. Here you can see the old one versus the new one, all that torn up damage and staining versus this with minimal damage, virtually no staining. Now why fix this you ask? Honestly, I just don't want that fabric falling on my head at some point. Now you get to have fun at my expense and laugh at me while I try to put this thing back in. We're gonna get a little closer for this final work. 
just so you get a better detail. Uh, that panel there does need to come forward. I made a slight mistake when I was setting it up. But the weather stripping here, uh, this is going to need to rest up in it. It's actually going to need to slide up into that. That's my loose end. So I actually brought the entire panel out past the point, slipped it back onto that. And now I'm sliding it up to that point. It's going to be along this and back in there. And then I'll put that panel on the other side and then reconnect all the fasteners. So I've just reversed the order of doing all this stuff. I uh, reinstalled that just so it was out of the way. There are two different types of clips. This one with the square bottom goes in the front portion. The other one goes in the back. The front one seemed to be a little more difficult. All I got left on this end is to put that back, screw the handles back on, and I got to put that panel on and that cover there, tighten that seatbelt back down. And since I'm here, we're going to go ahead and put on this sun visor. Important note that your sun visors actually help hold the front end of your headliner up. So on the other side where I was trying to put this panel back because there are three clips that hold it into the frame. This weather stripping didn't want to work. Uh, what I ended up doing was taking a screwdriver, getting just behind it, running it up along the lip until I got all the way up. It was a whole lot easier than trying to force it and risk breaking 25 year old plastic, right? And now last step. That is got a particular shape, flat on one side, rounded on the other. And there you go. Like I said, a pair of clips up near the top, screws to hold it at the bottom, and it's back in place. And I learned something today, just now. The truck I pulled this from did not have this console at all. Didn't realize it's a larger console. <laughs> uh, I'll see if I can find a large one later, but I'll take the better headliner and deal with that right now. So as you can see, everything's back together. Headliner's in place. Got a pair of sun visors now, so my passengers can quit complaining about not being able to see. And even with this little mistake, where I ended up with a, I have a smaller console than the truck this came out of. I'm satisfied with it, and if I really need to, I'll go find the right size console at some other point.